Hey, this is Manav Misra, aka Codefinity. Had a question from a student regarding using the input type equals time. So I've got this set up here uh, just as a simple form with a simple submit button, input type equals time. And the way that ends up looking, that there's some really basic CSS, but nothing that's going to affect anything. The way that ends up looking is like this. I can come in here and I can put in the hours, minutes, and then here I can type A or P for AM or PM. And that's all fine and good. I'm going to show what that logs. But let's make sure we're on the same page here. We're just grabbing the form from the document. We're adding an event listener that's listening for a submit event. We grab the event. We prevent default. If you don't have that in there, then this page is going to try to submit the event or actually do a form submission, and we don't want that. Uh, so from there, this may look a little bit weird, but we're taking event.target. That ends up being the form. It's really sort of the source of the event. We're grabbing all of the elements, which in this case is just the one input. Since there's only one thing, we just want to access index zero, and we want to grab the value. So that's not really the point of the video. I just wanted to give you some insight as to how this is going. So now let me submit this, and you can see what happens. We get back a string. We know it's a string because there's quotations, and it just says 1111. What happened to the AM? So kind of weird. What if I switch this to PM? Then what happens? Okay, so this answers the question regarding AM and PM. The input type time uh, turns our time into a string, but it uses military time. So this student um, wanted to you know, not have military time. They wanted to say AM or PM. How can they do that? Uh, well, for one thing, if you were using a date time input, you would get like the little calendar, and then you can do a lot of cool stuff by using the date constructor. But we can actually just keep it a little bit simpler here. So we've seen now that we can get the string as military time. How can we turn that to AM and PM? Here's, here's how we're going to do that. That's a string. We're going to take just the first two characters of that string. So, for example, just the 23. And then we basically just need to know if it's greater than 12, that means it's PM. And if it's 12 or less, then it is AM. That's it. So this is how it's going to look. First thing to do is how do we slice off those first couple of characters? I just pretty much gave it away there. So I've got this function here, get AM or PM. We're going to start using this function. doesn't do anything just yet. Okay, so it's going to receive that time string, and it's going to tell us if it's AM or PM. Let's start by just seeing if we can pull out those first couple of characters. So time, again, it's just nothing but a string. I'm going to use the slice method, and the way this works is we give the starting index of where we want to slice. What do I mean by that? Well, you see, strings are can behave like array-like structure, so we can access like they're an array. We can say, okay, index 0 is 2, index 1 is 3 in this case. So we can pretend like they're an array. It's an array-like structure here. So if I want to slice, I'm going to say, look, I want to slice starting from zero, and I want to slice up to, but not including index two. Let's uh, save that, run that now, and this time I'll put um, 55 p.m. And there we go. We've pulled out the 23. Again, I put 11.55 p.m., that's 23.55, and we extracted index zero and index one. So you can see here that the slice method does not include this last index there. So saying slice zero two means give me zero and give me one, that's it. Now we're kind of in the home stretch here. We need to do uh, two more things. We need to compare it to the number 12, but this is currently a string. We know it's a string because of the quotation marks. So let's go ahead and turn it into a number. Not a problem. One of the ways we could do that, is just wrap this into the number uh, constructor here. Okay, so I think that's a little overzealous error checking there. I just hadn't finished typing my parentheses. Let's say 11.55 p.m. and hit submit. Oops, uh, I did screw something up here. Let's see. Oh, okay, I am missing a parentheses. Let's see. I think we need one more over there. There we go. Now they're matched up. Let's do that again. 11, 
55 p.m. and hit submit. And you can see it's a different color. There's no quotation. So now we have the military format of the hours as a number. We're ready to finish up by seeing if it is uh, greater than 12 or not. So let's do it like this. We'll just write if, oops, I should have kept that actually. So instead of logging this, let's go ahead and throw an if statement in front of this thing. All right, if it is greater than 12, we're going to return the string PM. Else, we're going to return the string AM. All right, let's try this out now. It says that I'm missing, okay, I'm missing the same parentheses here. Okay, there we go. Hit save, exclamation mark went away. All right, so I'm gonna put 11.55 p.m. and it should come back and say p.m. Oh, and it didn't say anything because we forgot to log our result here. So I'm just gonna, just, I'm just gonna say const test equals, and then we're just going to console.log test. Okay, one more time. Let's put in 11.55 p.m. and hit submit. And there we go, it works. There is p.m. And likewise, if I was to switch this to a.m., I now have a.m. Beautiful, so we are done. If you wanna stick around though, I'm gonna refactor this just a little bit. We've got a lot of excess code in here. So second of all, anytime you have a return in a function, it doesn't read any other code in here. What that means is I can take this else brace and remove that and this thing will still work. All right, the reason why is because if this ends up being true, like the hour that we slice off is greater than 12, it's gonna jump in here, return PM and that's it. So anytime you have a return in a function, your function is finished. You're never gonna uh, get that AM. So that's cool. And that's pretty good right there. The last thing I'm gonna do here is rewrite this as a ternary, a ternary. And the way that looks is like this. I'm going to say return. I wanna return something, but I need to ask a question. The question I wanna ask is right here, what we just talked about. Hey, is this true? If it's true, if it's greater than 12, I want you to return PM. Otherwise, I want you to return AM. So in this way, we've really cut the code down. I'm going to hit clear. We'll just make sure that I'm not just making this up and that it still works. And it does say AM. Beautiful. Uh, so that's it. Hopefully that was helpful. To recap, we had an input type of time. Our issue was that we wanted to get AM or PM out of that. Uh, we received the submit event and we pull the value from our one in, uh, input type. We wrote a function that receives a time string. It convert, it slices off just the first two parts of the string to get the hour. And let's see, it actually, oh, you know what? I don't think we need this number here now that I'm going through this because we're already comparing it to a number and I think that's gonna take care of the string business. Let's try it again. Okay. Oh, beautiful. We don't even need that. Simplify it, right? Because we're comparing it to a number with this greater than, so it automatically takes our string and uh, converts it to a number implicitly. All right. So that was cool. Um, so now we just ask the question, hey, is this greater than 12? If yes, return PM. If no, return AM.